what is one socially unacceptable fact about yourself. Story 1. I pick my nose relentlessly. Story 2. I this comment is heavy for me because I'm currently crawling away from years of crippling depression. And I didn't even realize I was depressed. I can only give examples from myself, but not sure if it would apply to you. I recommend giving yourself some time to read on your issues, or watch, listen, or talk, and spend some quality time with yourself like yoga, jogging, or taking a hike solo during a nice day, or whatever your poison is. First of all, if thoughts and motivations fly by in your mind at the speed of light, and you can't hold on to any single one of them, it becomes really hard to discover anything about yourself. And we call this a mental disorder of the sorts ADHD. Depression fuels this by a whole lot, and not being able to focus makes you miss every single enjoyable step of every single thing in life. Brushing your teeth, driving, working, studying, walking your dog. Instead of finding ways to get things done, be gentle to yourself about your shortcomings and enjoy anything. You just want everything to be over with so you can return to your escape. Second thing I realized was that I had dreams and aspirations but never took a solid step to achieve them. They were just there, not providing any sort of drive or motivation. I would just go through life and make excuses constantly to remain in my comfort zone because I was burned out and couldn't summon the energy to undertake a single challenge. Another clue was my past. I escaped it wherever I can, never wanted to do anything with it, never developed any perspective, and was stuck with the same thoughts any beliefs up until I started living outside of it. There are other things I went through, but this is enough Reddit reading, I suppose. Just remember, in both cases, you can discipline yourself to create a pretty cushy life where you learn to deal with sources of stress, anxiety, or apathy. It's hard to summon that energy to get anything done, but slow does it. Story 3. I talk to myself as if people were listening even when I'm alone. Story 4. I have full-on conversations when I'm alone in the car. I find that it's a good way to get my thoughts in order. I have conversations that I'll never have in person. I'll imagine that I'm arguing with somebody, or that I'm on late night with Conan O'Brien taking about my new movie, I'm Not an Actor. I just love Conan. Sometimes I just pretend that I'm explaining a hobby, or something to a friend. Thank goodness cars have Bluetooth capabilities these days. Sometimes at stoplights, I'll take breaks in between sentences so that the people in other cars think I'm talking on the phone. Story 5 I definitely do not know at what point expressing my desire to talk to someone crosses from reaching out in a friendly way into annoying and impinging, and I worry about it. Story 6 when I worked in a human transplant tissue lab, I would talk to the deceased donors to make myself feel better about processing a person who died suddenly hours before. Like, hey, Mrs. Byatt, how are we feeling today? When she is obviously lying in pieces in a cooler about to be swabbed, irradiated, and transplanted in another human. Story 7 I feel like I'm constantly analyzing how to interact with people, every conversation, I have feels like a performance, and not the real me, like him just mimicking other conversations I've read or heard. Story 8 I have no real desire to do anything extraordinary with my life. I just want to have my own little corner in the world, and not be bothered by anyone, or bother anyone. Story 9 I don't know what the fuck I'm doing most of the time, respectfully. Story 10 I have no ambition to do anything, no dream job or passions either. I'm not depressed by any stretch, but I just would be happy and fine if all I did was lay around all day and live off saved money. However, most people are utterly disgusted by that, so I lie and pretend I have a dream job or that I'm passionate about certain things. I honestly only really do any of those things for money or to pass the time. I don't care about any of them. Story 11 I have never been in an emotionally deep and mutually trusting relationship. I want to be, but I've never met someone who felt the same way. I'm very introverted, and one poor relationship experience left me reeling for the better part of a decade. Story 12 When I'm out in public, I sometimes put my earbuds in just to listen to what other people are saying around me, nothing playing on my end. 
Story 13 I met my wife at her wedding. My ex-wife and I went to one of her friend, co-workers' wedding about ten years ago. Let's call the friend Sarah. I had never met Sarah before. Over the years, we kind of became friends, but not particularly close. She'd come over to take care of our son once in a while. When I was working nights and my ex had something going on, we went camping with her and her husband a few times. I even went to the movies with her husband once or twice. Sarah and I always got along really well. We had very similar taste in music, very similar sarcastic senses of humor. Well, things started getting really shitty between my wife and I, and eventually she left me. Sarah kind of acted like a buffer between us because things were tense, and we still had a child to consider. This led to Sarah and I starting to have long conversations about pretty personal stuff. Little did I know her marriage was in trouble too. Her husband, let's call him Dave, had essentially forced her into an open relationship that she didn't want. She'd agreed to try it because she didn't want to give up on it, but by this point she'd had enough. I even called Dave and told him to sort his shit out and stop doing this to Sarah. He did not and eventually Sarah left him. Through all of this she and I kept talking, almost like a kind of therapy. We were both going through really difficult things, and being there for each other really helped get both of us through. My ex, Sarah, and some of my ex's other friends were up at a cottage for a girl's weekend. And on the Saturday night I get a text from Sarah saying she's leaving because my ex had outed her for some very personal stuff in front of the other people there who she didn't even know that well. Her plan was to sleep in her car and drive home in the morning. I was living between the cottage and where she lived and was worried about her so I told her to come crash at my place for the night, which she did nothing happened. After that we started hanging out more frequently and really started to become attracted to each other. Sarah had told me before this that she had feelings for me. I had still been trying to make things work with my ex and had told Sarah that we couldn't because it would devastate her. By the time all this happened I'd started dating a little bit and had given up on working things out. I also wasn't very concerned about how my ex would react anymore because she'd been pretty horrible to both of us for quite a while now. One thing led to another, and one night we just said fuck it. And that was that. We've been together about five years now, have a kid, and couldn't be happier. Story 14 I never just have a few beers, if I have one. Story 15 I usually drink at home so when I get plastered my bed is only a few steps away. A few days ago I went out to celebrate a friend's birthday and realized I have this issue. I fell out of my seat at a bar. I quickly got up but realized I could not walk properly. Usually no big deal since my bed is just a few steps away from my living room. But oh god the uncomfortable and awkwardness of having to ask my friend's older brother for his shoulder just so I could make it out the bar made me realize I have an issue. Once I have one I need to have ten. I have no issue when I'm sober. But once I'm not, I can't stop till I'm too far gone. What makes me stop is passing out. Story 16 I can go for weeks without talking to anyone. I have no need to talk. I'd make a great vow of silence, monk. Story 17 I have fake conversations with people I know in my head that result in me argumenting loudly to no one. Story 18 I daydream way too much. I'm constantly daydreaming. At home, at work, while I'm driving. Before I'm sleeping, while I'm eating. I'm always daydreaming. Story 19 Sometimes I like having fake phone conversations. Sometimes because I just need to talk through a problem or plan something out loud, but my mom isn't picking up the phone. Sometimes for my own entertainment trying to get people to eavesdrop. Story 20 I am a grown man who likes to play with action figures. And yes, I do make the noises to pretend they're fighting. It's my hobby. It relaxes me. And yet I rarely tell people because they look at me like I'm a child. Why should we lose our sense of wonder as we grow? Story 21 I have an incredibly hard time talking to people I don't know. Story 22 I don't want to work. I just want to live in a grassy field and eat fruit. Story 23 And you rather be naked about 80% off the time. Story 24 I will do nothing but sleep and eat all day if I could. I'm currently unemployed and basically do that every day. 
And trust me, it's very easy to stop caring about yourself. Stop showering. Stop brushing your teeth. Thus getting more lazy, not going out anymore because showering seems already like so much effort. And sleeping is so much easier. And boom. Depression pit. It's so easy to slip into this, and just a tiny little step each day. There are a lot of days that I feel like useless garbage, and that I absolutely suck. I can recommend taking a break from working for two months, or maybe even three, but it's not as easy sitting home all day as we imagine it is. I feel like I have no purpose anymore. Story 25 I typically do not masturbate for pleasure. I usually do it just to make myself tired enough to fall asleep. Story 26 Can't stand brushing my teeth. I do it but hate it. Story 27 I can't do groceries by myself always have to call a homie to come with me. I can do anything publicly, but I WTF it is about grocery stores I need someone to hold my hand or else I am dipping without any groceries. Story 28 it might sound ridiculous, but I was born a left-handed person. It was unacceptable in our family, and I was forced to eat and write with my right hand. Now, I can write with both, but much faster and neater with my right hand. In my dreams, I still write and eat with my left hand. Story 29 I would rather sleep than talk to another person like all the time. Story 30 On one here, a dumpster dive and find perfectly good fruit at the grocery store. I don't eat them but turn it into cider or distill it to something stronger. When I go to a group event or party, I just bring a 10 plus gallons of whatever to the party as my contribution to the group. I've given many people at least 200 gallons of alcohol to mix drinks for their wedding or events. All for free. The thing is, I don't drink. I don't drink at all. Story 31. I am faking everything. Literally, I could not care less about anything, but I fake it all. Story 32 I've always struggled with sweaty hands and feet since I was a small child. In formal settings, I enjoy the option of wearing opera gloves. People think I'm being fancy. Oh, bra, I'm just hiding that I have to shake 9,000 hands at this event tonight, and I don't want to have to keep wiping them on my dress. Story 33 I have bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder. No matter how much people scream mental health matters on their social media pages, the stigma is very much still there. Story 34 I hate showering. I do it every day, but I hate it. It's not the showering that I hate. It's the fuss and trouble of having to dry off and deal with my hair. I do it because I hate being unhygienic more than I hate showering, but I view bathing as a chore. Story 35 I don't talk to anyone other than close relative, not even friends. Story 36 I think being a stay-at-home dad would be great. I hope I can be. Story 37 I don't have any hobbies. I just don't have anything special I do to be entertained or something that makes me super interesting. People just question me what the hell I do all day without anything like that. It's not a good look somehow. Story 38 I think my family are a bunch of self-involved manipulating assholes. And if they didn't talk to me again, it might make my life easier. Story 39 My father was not a very engaged parent, but when school started trying to force me to be right-handed, he went to the school for the first and only time. He told them the boy is left-handed, let him be, and they did. Story 40 as a woman, I do not want kids. I also think people should be able to choose voluntary euthanasia so they don't have to suffer if they don't want to generally not for mental health problems, but for physical ones. Also, I don't follow rules because this post said one thing, and I said three things, so there. Story 41 I think I'm autistic, but I'm not diagnosed. I've been reading a ton of studies on ASD presentation in adults, but I almost feel embarrassed doing so without a diagnosis. Story 42 The uncontrollable urge to discuss rats during sexual intercourse. It started off as a joke, 
but now the thoughts are pretty intrusive. Story 43 I absolutely hate driving. It's hard to find a decent job when there's nothing good around, and the thought of driving further than ten minutes away makes me want to jump off a bridge. Story 44 I'm a reasonably attractive, goal-driven woman in my 20 seconds and I have genital herpes. Right before the first pandemic shutdown, I was raped at a concert and got it as a result. I've healed a lot from what happened and have very much come to terms with it. And I accept it's a part of who I am. But yeah, generally the perspective on STDs sucks and people are quick to joke about them. Judge people who have them when in reality these things can happen to just about anyone. Story 45 I am really good at relating to everybody, and then they say or do something I don't like and I ghost. It doesn't even have to be anything that's serious. I just peace out. Someone said I just don't like people, but I'm sure it's deeper than that. Story 46 There is nothing I've encountered inside a fish tank or kitchen sink that I have felt too grossed out by to shove my hand in. A's old discolored grease congealed at the top of a sink filled with water. A reach in and unclog it. A fish filter that hasn't been changed in literal years. And is completely full of algae and fish shit. I'll grab it with my bare hands and toss it no problem. Story 47 I am 46 years old. And whenever I come across a self-opening door, I make a small movement with my hand like I am using the force. I don't even control that consciously anymore. It's automated behavior. Story 48 I'm a hopeless people pleaser. I'm working very hard on that, but I've been abused into being terrified of making anyone upset, so I tend to let people walk on me and push limits until it's really breaking me before I start setting boundaries. And it often results in hurtful situations for everyone involved. I'm working on it, though. Story 49 I have a voice in my head who I talk to out loud sometimes. Not like my inner thoughts, but it's like they're another person. I know they're not real, but they make me think twice about doing or not doing something, usually for the better. Story 50 My friend's list is shrinking as I am aging. Now I am 42 and got one friend left. Life and kids dictating all my focus and attention. 